but we were lucky enough to have open water. And I said, man, I'm all for it. Being able to run to your whitetail blind across open water doesn't happen in many places, but Saskatchewan is one of them. Last year I came up here to Grant's place and uh, shot the biggest buck I've ever shot in my life, 181 inch buck. Can I shoot a deer bigger than a 181? Maybe. Our deer population is as high as it's ever been. That's Grant Kuypers, owner of Buck Paradise Outfitters. Muzzleloader hunting is fun and frustrating for me too. I love it, but you never know what's going to happen. What is going to happen is a muzzleloader hunt in the land of the giants on this episode of Whitetail Revolution. Winchester Whitetail Revolution is brought to you by Winchester Ammunition, the American legend, Otis Technologies, the most advanced gun care system in the world, Code Blue, perfecting the science of hunting, Winchester Rifles and Shotguns, the guns that work. The past is prelude for top deer hunting writer Mike Hanbeck as he returns to where he took the whitetail of a lifetime the year before. Gosh. Look at that. I was telling myself the whole time, I'm not gonna shoot a deer the first half now. I'm not gonna shoot a deer, I'm not gonna shoot a deer. Any time, the buck of your dreams, a gigantic monster, is liable to step out. I thought it would never get light this morning. Last year I came up here to Grant's place and shot the biggest buck I've ever shot in my life, 181 inch buck in a 10, 15 minute hunt. Something you dream of, it never happens, but it happened to me and I was very fortunate of that. So when you come back, how do you want up that? You could and you might not. That's why I'm obsessed with it. Uh, can I shoot a deer bigger than a 181? Maybe, there's a good chance I won't. And uh, I may not shoot one at all. I may hunt six days and not shoot one. I may pass up some or whatever, but you just never know what's going to happen, and that uncertainty is a big part of hunting all the time, and especially up here where these big deer live. A larger percentage of top 10 typical whitetails come from Saskatchewan than from any other state or province. Mike came up here on the Sunday. We went and sighted in the muzzleloader, made sure everything was working good. And for rifle, we'll set him up up to 200 yards. We don't like to go much over 200, but. With a muzzleloader, we had to set everything up a little bit different. It makes it a lot tougher to get an animal within 100 yards. It's always important to check your gun before you go out hunting, make sure everything's shooting right. We went out and made sure everything was on. Everything worked out. Muzzleloading for Saskatchewan monsters. I'll tell you, that is, that is awesome, because most of the you know, hunting up here is with rifles and stuff, you know, when I've yeah. been up here mostly. And I wanted to try it with a muzzleloader, so. The combination of pellet charges and sabotaged ballistic tip bullets make the modern scope muzzleloader a superb medium range hunting weapon. The whitetail hunting's exploded in Saskatchewan more and more all the time. 
We've got four camps running right now. We have great guides working for us. And every year I've noticed the bucks getting bigger, better, higher averages. Now the first time a guy comes up here, it's a little tough. Well, I'm used to seeing a smaller deer, which makes the horns look bigger on the animal. And sometimes you come up here, you see such a huge bodied animal that actually makes the horns look a little bit smaller than what they're thinking that they are. And if guys have a lot of trouble, it is a six day hunt. And you don't know until you've been up here. No question, I've become obsessed with Saskatchewan monster whitetail because of the country so big and the big bush and these monster deer, you know, 300, 320 pounds and big black gnarly rack, amazing. She ran right out in front of my blind there and started snorting and blowing and she kept it up. And lo and behold, 10 minutes later, here comes a buck. Let's get to this week's Whitetail Insider, your source for the latest in the ever-changing world of whitetail hunting. A lot of hunters think trail cameras are great for preseason scouting, but let Mike Hanbeck explain why you should keep them working throughout the season. Shane Smith had trail camera photos of a gigantic 10-point on his Kansas land, but he'd never actually seen the deer before. When Shane went bow hunting last November, he hoped to see the big boy, but he'd never kill a buck with his bow. He'd take the first good one that came along if he got so lucky. The very first deer to come by was a trail camera giant. The buck walked within 16 yards of Shane's stand, but he couldn't get a shot. Shane kept his cool under pressure, stopped the buck with a big grunt at 32 yards. His arrow was perfect. Not a bad first bow buck. The 10 pointer with long tines and stickers growth score 203. Two great lessons here. Set out a few trail cams on your land and leave them running throughout the season. When you get pictures of a big buck like Shane's, move in right now for the kill. Don't go hunting looking to shoot a giant buck or a 200 incher or any monster deer. Just go out to have some fun, hope you see some deer, you might get lucky and get a shot. When you're calm and loose like that, you have to shoot a giant like Shane did. From the Big Buck Zone, I'm Mike Handback. You know, this is just another great example of what you see on my Big Buck Zone blog. Just good, down-to-earth, hardcore deer hunt. Hunted in Saskatchewan and over in Alberta and here in Western Canada, you know, a number of times, but the allure when Grant said, you know, we're going to do a boat hunt on a lake because you're November in Saskatchewan, you know, it's going to freeze up pretty quick. But we were lucky enough to have open water. And I said, man, I'm all for it because I'm always out there, sort of a little bit on the edge, looking for something different. And, and a boat hunt in Saskatchewan for me just sounded like a real winner. Ready for this cool ride. we will wake you up first thing in the morning. No problems there. there go. Good to go. Last year, Hanbeck dropped a 181 Saskatchewan buck with his rifle. Now the question is, what can he do with a muzzle loader? I love this spot. The blind's probably right just over the hill. Yeah, point over this little corner point here. Yeah. Go, sir. Right. Let's go and have a look. Yeah. And the blind's just up over this little hill. point here. Yeah. Okay. Saskatchewan's hunting regulations require deer hunters during the regular rifle season to wear a complete suit of white, red, yellow, and orange cloth. During the muzzleloader season, though, this requirement is lifted, so Hanbeck can legally hunt in camo. Awesome spot. Yeah. I'm telling you. You remember this one from I last do. year? I really do. I love this place. Hey. Where's the deer been coming quite this year? Uh, some of them have been coming up off these ridges here, mm -hmm. but mostly straight out in front to the right a little bit. Okay. All right. We just have to keep our eyes open and look around. See you in 12 hours. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be thinking of you when I light my fire. I bet you will. <laughs> hey, thanks, buddy. You bet, Mike. You got everything you need? Got it. Hey, thanks, Mike. Corn. Good luck. When you come to Saskatchewan, you definitely got to get in the mindset of coming up here and getting to a blind, 
and sitting there all day, 10, 12 hours. And the reason you do it is very clear. I mean, I've hunted up here for a lot of years and I've seen good bucks come by at 10 in the morning, at 2.30, at 2.20, 325 last year, I shot a 181 up here, my best buck ever. You just never know. It. A lot of people say, well, you know, I'm gonna sit there and just hunt hard the whole time. Well, you can't do that. Nobody can stay on edge for that long. When you're sitting for 10 or 12 hours, really, you gotta find creative ways. So what I do is I'll take a paperback book with me, I'll take some lunch, of course, and maybe some coffee and all that kind of thing. You, you look for deer, and then maybe you sit back and you read a few pages in your book, and you keep glancing up, and that keeps me on edge, believe it or not, because if you just sit there like a zombie all day for 10 or 12 hours, uh, pretty soon you're gonna lose your focus, lose your edge. So it's a long day out there, and really, once you get used to it, it passes a little faster each day, because you never know when the big bruiser's gonna step out, and that's what kind of keeps you going. There were a couple of does working in this area, and one of them had two fawns. She ran right out in front of my blind there and started snorting and blowing, and she kept it up. I got to thinking it could be a buck up on that ridge there. Two weeks out from the rut like that, the doe is not ready to accept the buck, and she really doesn't want anything to do with him yet. And lo and behold, there here comes a buck, working his way off that ridge and, and coming in. Beautiful nine pointer, huge daggers. Two hours left in the hunt, and he stepped out there at 50 yards. A great trophy buck that I wanted to take right there. Winchester Whitetail Revolution is brought to you by Winchester Ammunition. The American legend, Otis Technologies, the most advanced gun care system in the world. Code Blue, perfecting the science of hunting. Winchester Rifles and Shotguns, the guns that work. On this episode's segment of Overheard, veteran deer hunters Ron Spomer and Larry Weishan discuss the ethics and aesthetics of using ATVs in deer hunting. I'm sorry guys, but hunting out of an ATV is a curse. I, I know there are plenty of people who have ATVs and there's nothing wrong with them. An ATV is a tool just like a pickup truck, except for you get rained on. I'd like to talk to Mr. Spomer in about another five, six years when he's been around a little bit longer. You know, as our hunting public grows older, the last thing we want to do is to keep them out of the field, and in some instances, that's one of the best way to get folks out in the field, be it young people, be it ladies, be it elderly gentlemen that maybe can't walk like they did 10 years ago, like you're walking right now. The downside of the AV, ATV is when people try to take advantage of the resource by using an ATV to get to it or to chase it. You know? And we like to say, no, nah, we just get on the ATVs to get back into the country. I'm sorry, guys, and it sounds good, but I don't see it happening. Most of the time, the guy on the ATV is cruising all around the country and spooking the game, ticking everybody else off in the woods. There's some people I think that really take ATVs maybe a little bit too far. I'm one of those that hate to admit it. I kind of agree with you to a point. It's great to get to the point. But there's some people to say that just let's do totally away with ATVs and hunting. I think that's the wrong approach to take. We need to get more people out in the field. If you want to get your ATV and go up a rotten, crummy road that you could drive in your pickup anyway, fine, that's what they're there for. But once you get to the end of the road, you're not supposed to be driving through the trees and over the mountains and across the marshes and every which way trying to flush game. Like, that's stupid. 
we need to have more hunters. And if that's the case, if that gets them into the field, simply because they're speed freaks or ATV freaks, but they still like to hunt, more power to them. We need more hunters. Log on to Versus.com to tell us where you stand on the debate. It's two hours away from the end of nearly a full week of whitetail hunting for Mike Hanbeck. I was waiting for five days and passed up a couple of smaller bucks and it got to the last day and uh, I came back to a spot where I shot the biggest buck in my life. Had a doe and fawns come in and they kind of got spooky and all that. And when she ran down there and started snorting, I said, you know, there could be a buck up on that hill right there. And sure enough, not 10 minutes later, here comes this beautiful nine pointer with these gigantic dagger tines. The deer came in 50 yards, it was perfect. I was right on him, made a perfect shot. As soon as he got in the woods, it looked to me like he went right down. So now I'm pumped to work six days for this buck. I'm sure gonna reload before I go over there and look at him. Okay, let's go. It looks as if handbacks made a solid hit on the deer. But will this big body buck be where Hanbeck thinks it went down? I'll tell you, muzzleloader hunting is fun and frustrating for me too. I care farther. I love it. But you never know what's going to happen. I went over there and I, I bet a million dollars that deer was laying right there where I saw him go down. Yeah, I come this far. I don't know. Let's see. I went over there and no, no buck. But I could see where he kind of stumbled up that hill. And I went up that hill. And then I went up another little hill. It's a tough thing to do sometimes when you gotta follow up a deer like that. But I did, and I got up in there, and then I saw the buck. There he is. Look at this big Saskatchewan monster. Saskatchewan, baby, that's why I love it. 320 pound monster bucks. Look at those brow tines, world class right there. One of those things a deer hunt rarely happens for me is pass up a buck and look for a bigger buck for two more days. Passed him up on Wednesday. Came back in here last day and shot him with a muzzleloader. I'll tell you, come down to two hours left and you hunt and you get the opportunity to take a magnificent creature like this. Awesome experience, it really is. So when you come muzzleloader for these deer, you gotta bring a big bullet, 300 grains or so, 150 grains of powder because they are tough and they are big and they are awesome to hunt. One key element hunting with a muzzleloader for me is you know you're gonna get that big plume of smoke blow out. Very important. Let the smoke clear on its own and then look out there and try to pick up your buck. Look at the last point that he went by, whether it's a tree or rock or whatever. You can go right to that spot, start looking for your blood trail there. Good job, Mike. And recover the buck. Look at brow tines on that sucker. Yeah. Couldn't miss those, huh? Damn, they're big. They are monsters. We got a long ways down to that boat. Yeah. I'll tell you. All right. Should, should be nice if we get wheels on that boat. <laughs> well. I guess we might as well get to work. Helping people fulfill their dreams and some of the animals we get to hunt and go out there and meet so many new people, it's just a great experience. Every day it's great. Being a great guy with a great personality on top of that, he does an awesome job, it really was. And it was great for me to kind of come back up here and rekindle our friendship that we started five years ago, and that's always a great part of the camaraderie of hunting. That's it, I think. That's a big buck. <laughs> Woo, six days. All right, way in the front. That's where it is, 320 
Good job, good job, buddy. Uh, woo! And you're out here in the wilderness all day, 12 hours, thinking all kinds of personal thoughts, thinking about hunting, thinking about life, thinking about family, thinking about the good things in your life, the bad things. It all comes out when you're out here. You're, you really tune in with nature, and it's just really a cool experience. which shows how the whitetail revolution takes place on the inside as well as the outside.